In this video message, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15. So if you have a Bible with you, that's great. If not, well, I'm going to read it now and you can follow as I read through quite a bit of this chapter 15. In fact, from verse 1 of chapter 15 of Mark's Gospel through to verse 28. And then I'm going to cross-refer to the Gospel of John and chapter 19, and just a few verses from John chapter 19. But let's look at the main body of Holy Scripture. Uh, Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. And early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council immediately held a consultation, and binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him up to Pilate. And Pilate questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? And answering him, he said, It is as you say. And the chief priests began to accuse him harshly. And Pilate was questioning him again, saying, Do you make no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them any one prisoner whom they requested, and the man named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude went up and began asking him to do as he, as he had been accustomed to do for them. And Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he was aware that the chief priests had delivered him up because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the multitude to ask him to release Barabbas for them instead. And answering again, Pilate was saying to them, Then what shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him. But Pilate was saying to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. And wishing to satisfy the multitude, Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers took him away into the place, that is, pre the Praetorium, and they called together the whole Roman cohort. And they dressed him up in purple, and after weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to acclaim him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they kept beating at his head with a reed and spitting at him and kneeling and bowing before him. And after they had mocked him, they took the purple off him and put his garments on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they pressed into service a passer-by coming from the country, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. And they tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. transgressors. That's the account, of course, of the final hours of the Lord Jesus, when Pilate, um, not literally but metaphorically, washed his hands of Jesus, didn't want anything more to do with him. He, he gave in to the pressure of the Jewish leaders and the Jewish people who wanted the Lord Jesus crucified. The people chose uh, Barabbas over Jesus. That's a picture, really, is it not? I'm, I would suggest that it is. That's a picture, a, a type of how people react because people given a choice of accepting and following and acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus and, and, and Jesus as being God, 
they will choose somebody else, whether that person be an important politician or uh, <clears throat> somebody from the local area in which they live who is a, a successful sports person or a successful local politician, whether the person they choose is a celebrity of some sort who is a singer or an actor or a television personality. People choose all sorts of characters over and above Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the way it is, regrettably. You see, because ever since things went wrong in the Garden of Eden, when mankind sinned, we have an inbuilt um, desire to worship any anyone or anything other than other than almighty god we are in rebellion as a human race ever since things went wrong we are in rebellion against almighty god and we will choose our tendency is we will choose anyone or anything to follow and to elevate and to revere instead of elevating and revering god almighty god Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That is the way it is because of our fallenness, because of our fallen, uh, substandard human nature. That's what we do. So the people, the crowd, representative, I would suggest, of fallen humanity, they had a choice. And, and from reading the scriptures, it, it would seem as if Pilate again not literally but metaphorically he bent over backwards to give the people the choice of accepting Jesus and, and rejecting Barabbas because we know that at this particular time the custom was at the Passover the Jewish feast at this time it was the custom for the Romans to release somebody who deserved punishment who deserved the death penalty that the custom was to release somebody to, to the people and the people made the wrong choice. And that's, as I've been trying to explain in the last minute or so, that's the way people react. That's what happens. People make the wrong choice. And I'm going to be blunt here. I'm going to be very pointed, not with my fingers, but in my speech and say, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as God, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as your God, then you have made the wrong choice. You are following the wrong person or people or ideology or way of life. You are elevating that person or thing or way of life above the Lord Jesus Christ. You've accepted wrong and you have rejected right. Just as the people we've read about in this account in scripture, they rejected righteousness and, and Jesus as God he, he was, he is absolute true righteousness, per perfection, uh, such a high standard of morality. People rejected Jesus and they accepted uh, in his place that someone called Barabbas should be released, who was a criminal. Um, but that's the way it is, as I've explained. So that's the, the view of the people, the crowd, they made the wrong choice. What about Pilate, who represented the Romans because he was he was a Roman? And for, for maybe somebody who's not familiar with the political situation at the time. The Jews were living in the land which Almighty God had given them uh, through promises way back in the Hebrew scriptures. God had given them certain land in which to live and they were living in the land. This is Jerusalem we're talking about here in, in particular. Um, but the Romans, uh, as a conquering um, empire, uh, had come and taken over and they were the leaders at the time. They were the governing authorities, the Romans, and they'd appoint, they appointed governors in various regions. And Pilate here was the person who was responsible for administering this type of justice in this particular situation in this area. So we've looked at the Jewish people, the, the, the leaders and the, uh, the ordinary folk, if you like. They made the wrong choice. What about Pilate? Well, I have already, haven't I, made a a reference to the fact that Pilate metaphorically washed his hands of Jesus. Um, it says here that there was a an inscription put above 
the head of Jesus when he was put on that cross, the King of the Jews. Let's look at John chapter 19, because I said I would earlier, because there was a, a, a parallel portion of scripture here. And in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, uh, from verses 19, from verse 19 through to 22, it says, And Pilate wrote an inscription also and put it on the cross, and it was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. <clears throat> Therefore, this inscription many of the Jews read, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and in Greek. And so the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Very telling three or four, four verses, three or four verses of scripture there, where again we see that the, the Jews through, the, um, through, through the, the chief priests were saying, don't call him our king, say that he, he called himself our king. And that again is, as I've been explaining, that's how people are. People will believe of Jesus Christ, whatever they will believe. But they want, and the same as happened in those days when Jesus was alive as a man, he was God, yet he was fully a man. People then wanted the good that Jesus brought to them. They wanted the physical healings that he brought to them. They wanted his high standard of morality and his teaching that he brought to them. But they would not accept him ultimately as, as their Lord. They would not alter their way of lives to, to adhere to his teachings. Some did, but the vast majority didn't. So the, the, the chief priests were saying on behalf of the people there, not only crucify him, but don't call him our king. Say that he said he was our king, but he wasn't really our king. That's just, that's simply what he said. People wanted the good from Jesus, as I've said, the physical healings, etc. But they would not go any further. And you know that's that's replicated today. That's what people want today. They want the good of Jesus, but they won't accept his authority and his lordship. They want the good of Jesus because they know and are aware that Jesus, to put it, not very theologically sound, but Jesus is. The, well, it is theologically so, and Jesus is the way to heaven. They want a ticket to heaven. People think they're going to heaven because of this man called Jesus. And many people know that he died in order to allow forgiveness. And he. many people know something about Jesus, and they want that good. They think that because he died on a cross, they are automatically going to heaven. And that's where they want to go. They want the good, but they won't accept his authority. They won't accept that they must submit to his lordship. That's, that's, that's still the case today, as it was in those days. And you see, Pilate, getting back to him, he metaphorically washed his hands of Jesus. And he was saying, well, Jesus, he's not our God. He's not the Roman God. He's the king of the Jews. He's your king. Nothing to do with us. He's nothing to do with me. You, no, Pilate again. Not physically, but metaphorically, he took a step back from the situation and he rejected Jesus because of the pressure of the crowd. Yes, maybe. I, I, we don't know exactly what was going through his mind, but certainly there was pressure on him to appease the crowd, to keep the crowd um, silent, to silence the crowd because he didn't want some sort of insurrection and riot. He didn't want the mob to, to run amok. He wanted a, a peaceful life. So for a sake of a peaceful life, he said, well, Jesus, nothing to do with me. And on the other hand, you have the, the Jews who are saying, Jesus, hmm, nothing to do with us. So we have God in the middle. We have Jesus Christ in the middle. Through Pilate, the Romans, they were saying nothing to do with us. The Jews were saying nothing to do with us. Just like today, many people say, Jesus, 
nothing to do with me, but I'll accept a ticket to heaven because I know that I want to go to heaven. And I know that I'm a good person, therefore I will go to heaven because that's what Jesus says. Well, that's wrong. People get that wrong all the time. People do not go to heaven because they are a good person. No, no, because that's setting the standard of, of what is good, who is good. <laughs> well, we know what the Lord Jesus said on one occasion. There was none good except God. But people think they are good enough to get to heaven without accepting the authority and without submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ. You could line up a dozen or 20 people and they'll say, Jesus, no, nothing to do with me. <laughs> you go along the line of people. And that's the sort of response you'll get because Jesus divides people. Those like myself who have the gift of faith for Almighty God and we have placed ourselves, our present and our future in the hands of Almighty God. We're not perfect, but we, we are called Christians because we are born again. We have a relationship with God. We would be the people who go to heaven, not everybody. So if you are watching this and you're thinking, well, you're not quite sure what to make of Jesus, the answer is simple. The choice is yours, as it was for the people when Pilate said Barabbas or Jesus. The choice is still today the same. The choice is yours to accept what the Lord Jesus did in dying on that cross as a punishment for your sins. The ultimate act of love and sacrifice, love from the Father into the human race and an act of obedience in the sacrifice by himself of the Lord Jesus. When he could have called down legions of angels, he could have taken himself off the cross, but he didn't. That's the love of God shown in action. And it's for you to accept that that's what the Lord Jesus did for you. That's what God did for you. So come under in, in submission to him. Come under his authority and repent. Ask for forgiveness for having led your life thus far in your own way and rejecting Jesus so far and having washed your hands of Jesus and saying, no, he's not my king. He's somebody else's king. This is what we can draw out of this this account in scripture, isn't it? So repent of that. Tell Almighty God that you're sorry and that you want to now give your life, give yourself to Jesus, to be born from above, to receive God as someone who saves you. Because we know that Jesus, of course, we know that he is the saviour of the world.